Hey, what's up guys? This is Bravo. Today I am answering your Halo 4 questions and I have asked Best Man to join me. For those of you who might be checking out my videos for the first time, Best Man and I both got to play a few hours of Halo 4 at E3 and today we're going to be answering for some of your questions. So the gameplay you are watching in the background is Halo 4 Hoaxer POV on a Drift. He's playing against some other MLG pros. You can find more gameplay like this at MLG.TV and also YouTube.com slash GameSpot. So our first question of the day, and this does not come from my wording, is Halo 4 better than piece of shit Halo Reach? B-Man, what do you say? Yes, 100%. Even though it's just the E3 build and it's not going to be the final product from what we played, 100% yes, it's better than Reach. I agree, yes. It's it's more fun than Reach. Uh, competitively, casually, everything about the game will be better than Reach, uh, which obviously has left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. So aim acceleration is our next question. Um, personally, I don't think we really played enough to figure out if there is uh, actual aim acceleration and to what degree. For those of you who might not be familiar with aim acceleration, uh, it's when, say you're playing on 5 sensitivity and you start to turn, uh, you actually are turning at 3 and then incrementally 4 and then 5. So depending on how much you're spinning and how much you're turning, uh, you actually, your aim and speed that you, you know, turn actually increases. Uh, best man, I don't think we really had enough time to figure out if there's actually aim acceleration and to what degree. Yeah, to touch on that, I mean, we were playing on uh, terrible TVs, to say the least, mm -hmm. standing up, um, moving around was, you know, it felt a lot more free than the past, uh, Halo Reach and Halo 3 especially, but right. um, the TVs really felt like you're real muddy when you're trying to aim. So, I mean, it just, it, it wasn't a good environment to test aim acceleration and whatnot. Yeah, it's definitely um, not the exact, you know, 22-inch monitor, 5 Five second, uh, five millisecond lag that we're used to. So, uh, auto aim. What do you think about specifically? I think the biggest question for auto aim is the BR. Um, you know, H Halo Two arguably had the most auto aim, I think, but it was also a great casual and competitive title. Everyone enjoyed Halo Two. It, it was, you know, obviously did huge things for the Halo series. So, how did you feel about the auto aim in Halo Four? Um, you know, for each weapon, it felt uh, pretty, pretty different. I would say the BR felt more like halo 3 and i know it's not the same uh would it be engine as mm -hmm. like as it was but um when you're up close it, it felt i mean like like i said again the tvs might have had an impact on this but it felt really hard to aim um up close and you know you kind of had to like drag it up a little bit so um overall i'd have to say there is some but compared to reach i think it's uh tuned down a little bit especially with the sniper as everyone's seen the only gameplay seen sniper is mine and i'm missing every shot <laughs> and uh, uh there, there was pretty much like no auto aim whatsoever on that like there yeah. was to an extent but i was trying to sweep snipe like you know you know in halo reach you could just put the aimer on them in the back of their head four feet away and you'll get a headshot yeah so this was completely different and the you know design looked different as well so Right, I, I think the We're best way to compare the magnetism, I think you and I spoke about earlier, would be closest to Halo 3, especially with the BR. Yep. Cool. All right, so uh, next question is, if the final product stays as it is now, would you personally want to see things changed for MLG or play the default settings? Now, this is obviously a question that is very controversial, and I actually have not sure how I feel about it. I say overall, if the game was came out right now and it was the same settings, I think some things would have to be tweaked. What do you think? Uh, I mean, unfortunately, yes, uh, they would have to be. And to be clear, we were playing on the Infinity Slayer, right? And we also played a game on the Slayer. I don't know what you played on because you weren't in our group of play or of uh, games. But yeah, I played pretty much the same thing you guys were playing. Yeah. So uh, as for Infinity Slayer, I mean, I've always made this argument that I want a game to come out as vanilla as possible for the the competitive settings. Obviously, not AR start. But, you know, that's going to be completely different now with the loadouts. But, uh, you know, obviously with the BR, DMR, and everything, everyone plays the same game as all the pros play. You don't want to draw that line that we have in the past Halos where, you know, kind of tunes out one side of the, the audience and another. So right now, I would, you'd have to change some things. But, you know, I'm hoping for the best that we can change as little as possible for when the final game comes out. Right, I agree. I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay, so the next thing is, does Halo 4 feel like it's going to be as competitive and skillful, you know, with crucial teamwork, power position control, etc., as the past Halos? Um, I'd say it, it, there's a little bit too many factors to consider at this point, and 343 did mention that the game is not done, that they're still tweaking a lot of settings, so I think it's a little bit hard to determine that. What do you think? Yeah, as far as, like, power position control and teamwork, that's what Reach lacked. Right. Um, you would not get rewarded for being in a better position than your teammate because of sprint 
and because of jetpack too. I mean, yeah, just different elements of the game. And I'm not saying that those elements could, you know, obviously they're going to be in Halo Four. <clears throat> we didn't get to see the jetpack, but uh, you know, <laughs> I hope it 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 it, uh, it it makes up for what Halo Reach was. Halo Reach had all the right ideas. And they just failed completely. Bungie would try to go out the bang and just failed. So hopefully 343 can implement those better in the final game to make it more balanced and uh, you know get 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 rewarded for having uh, p- positions and teamwork and whatnot. Right, I, I agree. There's going to be a lot of factors that are going to help determine what a power position is and how easily they're to get and whether or not those settings are turned on or turned off in MLG. So do you feel that sprint and ordinance drops, is the next question, will make it more Call of Duty-esque? This is obviously a hot topic, especially in, on YouTube, what, if the game's becoming more like Call of Duty. Um, how do you think that sprint and ordinance drops could fit into MLG? We know sprint is default right now in default uh, settings on the left stick. How do you think both of those could fit in MLG, and do you think that they might have to be removed altogether? Well, um, I, I personally love Sprint. Um, I did not like it in Halo Reach, but it felt more tuned up in, in this uh, in the version that we played at E3 right. in Halo 4. It, it felt amazing. Uh, I said it in one of the Halo Council videos, and they all bashed me about being Sprint, blah, 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 because mm-hmm. you know, it ruined Halo for MLG, but I think they picked off where Reach left off as far as making it uh, more advanced because everyone's like oh just remake halo 2 remake Halo 3 it's like no you, <laughs> you're not going to want to do that you're going to fail completely <clears throat> if a video game does that so um to to if it's more cod-esque um yeah in a sense it was but every every game is sort of based around each other whether, whether the people want to admit it or not right. call of Duty wasn't the first ones to have sprint and kill streaks or whatever else there is there there's other games that have that system too especially pc shooters mm-hmm. so um, will be more cod esque maybe, but that's not always necessarily a bad thing because you know Call of Duty without even LAN is striving more than Halo is. So right, I think yeah, if there's more people playing the game and enjoying the game, I think overall we'll have a better experience for the Halo community. So we already talked about the sniper. That was the next question, and of course another hot topic is the ranking system. Everybody wants to know about it. Uh, for all we know right now, this is what I gathered from E3 that there may be. Uh, two types of ranking systems one that is something like a skill system so something like a 1 through 50 and then there might be something like your brigadier grade 2 all this stuff ranking up progression system and those might to, might work independently of one another they might work with one another um, but all we know is that 343 did mention that there are currently problems with a 1 through 50 system they include cheating boosting and a lot of other little things that made the online matchmaking experience you know left a lot to be desired so all we know right now is that there may be two systems but they are definitely considering that they need to have something that can measure how good you are online outside of just a normal progression system did you hear anything else b uh well yeah when we were talking with kevin franklin i think right before you joined up at uh at anaheim friday night Uh he is a starcraft 2 fan and we did mention starcraft 2's uh ranking system how they're they have different divisions and he's a big fan of it like he knows what needs to be you know, in the game, and as far as as long as they know, like I, I have good faith into what they can do to make a good game. As long as they know like what is needed, and you know, I just don't want to see just a credit system where anybody can play anything, and there's a so-called true skill with quotations around right. it, yeah. and that, and then you're, you're 50 owing people. You know, yeah, because 343 just... did mention that Halo throughout the entire series has always had true skill, and uh, for whatever reason, that really just didn't work out in Reach, because obviously there's just mismatches every single time you go into matchmaking. Um, either you're playing against a team of four, or you're playing against people who are terrible, um, so it's just a lot of problems that are wrong with that system, but for those of you who might not be familiar with StarCraft system, it's essentially very s- similar to a 1 through 50 system, just broken right. down into several leagues, uh, and you level up in between the leagues, and you can only level up by winning, um, and it's ha- it takes away a lot of the flaws of that system. Of course, StarCraft is mostly a 1v1 game, so you have to factor in all those factors, so, but... Go it's ahead. a near perfect system. I yeah, I mean, it, it's and also it's a hidden system, just yeah. like uh, Halo 2's. Uh, you don't see the back end of the leveling; you just know w- what level you're at. So I think that is also important to avoid uh, people cheating. So the next question we have is: Does putting your head down do anything? That's also known as strong siding. Did you find yourself strong siding as you're running away? Did it make people did it, uh, it, decrease yeah, the amount of headshots? I I didn't really try to strong side. I got out of that habit a little bit in Reach because it didn't really work in Reach. Right, but. Um, one thing I did notice when you do try to run away is that you would stutter when you'd get shot when you're trying to sprint. Right. So that could also hinder to the fact that there probably won't be lucky pieces of 
crap like strong side getting away <laughs> as he did in halo 2 and halo 3 so well yeah it was impossible to kill okay so we have a few a little bit more time left in this gameplay so we have a few more things we can talk about let's talk a little about the primary weapon balance so we have the storm rifle the dmr the br and the carbine those are all possible loadout options depending on what perks you choose and, and abilities you can actually have spawn with two of these so what do you think how do these weapons balance out there's been a lot of dmr br talk but uh, Storm Rifle, do you think anyone's going to be choosing the Storm Rifle as a starting weapon? I, you know, I can't see it. Um, as far as when I used it, it just seemed like uh, a beefed up plasma rifle. Mm -hmm. But maybe not. As, like, I don't see it as a primary weapon. It just doesn't make sense. Because it's really just only good up close. Not really effective at all mid-range. And it's just kind of like a shield degenerate. Like, you shoot them, they you know, get really weak fast, and then that's it. You have to have someone else maybe there with you to pick up the headshot. But <laughs> I, I just don't see it bouncing out with dmr and br and maybe even carbine right in this As, game we've seen hoaxer yeah. use a lot of the dmr yeah. and the carbine um so it, it's really it seems right now at this point obviously players have only had a limited amount of exposure to the game but br dmr carbine are by far the go-to weapons and increasingly more uh dmr as people kind of learn just how powerful it was yeah i mean a lot of people like nated were strictly using br and uh hoaxer was using a lot of carbine from mm -hmm. for most of the games but i really like dmr it seems like uh, it just seems about a little bit more overpowered than the rest, but yeah, that actually know. was our next question. Do you yep. think the DMR is a little bit overpowered at this point? Yeah, I mean it did. To, like I was, you know, I did go. I dropped, you know, a neg 15 or neg 14 bomb one game, but I was using like all the the, the loadouts possible. Everyone was just sticking to one gun. Right. So well, you know, I, I ended up using DMR towards the end, like the last game, and I was just dem demolishing. Like people were dying. So it felt so smooth getting kills compared to the reach uh, DMR. Yeah, the shots hit really well, and that actually leads really well into our next question, which might be our last. Did you notice anything special about the hitboxes? Obviously, Reach's hitboxes uh, also were a little bit wacky. Did you notice any shots hitting weird, or did everything pretty much feel like when you saw a piece of Master Chief's armor and you shot at it, the hitbox connected? Yeah, I mean, it, I didn't really see anything fishy at all. Like, I, I feel like they uh, maybe, you know, uh, tried to fix that from Reach as much as they could. I, I didn't, you know, then again... We are just playing like five, seven or eight games, right. so it's hard to see just all the fishiness that we saw in Reach in just a uh, limited amount of games. So Definitely. Okay, so that is going to wrap up our last question. We have a lot of things left to talk about, guys, that we have noted down. For example, multi-kills, kill streaks, reskinning the medals, some of the maps, and recoil, uh, kill things like uh, the thruster packs. Those are going to be in our next installment of this video, which will be coming out this week. But thank you so much for checking out this video. We're going to be answering more of your questions in part two. So if you do have a question that you did not hear answered today, you go ahead and leave a comment below this video so we can keep these comments separate and we'll do our best to answer anything new. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Be sure to check out Best Man's Twitter at Nick Bestman and also youtube.com slash ibestman and please like and subscribe this video if you have not already thanks for watching take care and we'll be back soon peace